Greetings, folks. Today we're going to talk about diodes, our PN junctions. Essentially, we're going to be looking at what are called rectifying diodes or signal diodes. Examples of rectifying diodes would be the 1N4000 series, signal diodes, 1N914, 1N4148. Those are typical sorts of devices. All right. So when we left off, we were talking about a PN junction, like so. Our schematic symbol for a diode, because this is basically what a diode is, it's just a PN junction, schematic sig a symbol looks like this, right? and the same orientation. In other words, P material here, N material here. This side is referred to as the anode. This side is referred to as the cathode and it's often abbreviated with a K for a typical barrel style diode. You will find a band on the cathode. You'll see a little bar out here, right? So that's the cathode side and that's the anode side. And the sizes of these, of course, will vary considerably depending on what the application is. You can generally remember this by saying that the arrow points in the direction of N material or in the direction of easy conventional current flow. All right. So um, we drew a little diagram, a graph of the operation of our diode, PN junction anyway. And it looks something like this. So here's the forward diode voltage. Here's the reverse diode voltage. And then here's the current. So what we saw is uh, basically no flow until we hit the knee of the curve. And then that thing takes off. That knee for silicon is around 7 tenths of a volt. In the other direction, in the reverse bias direction, we get no current. If we go far enough, and I'll put a little break here because this is not to scale. If we go far enough, we will hit breakdown and we'll get a sudden very large increase in current. All right, so this is your breakdown. This is usually referred to on a data sheet as PIV, peak inverse voltage. And it will depend considerably on the design of the diode. So, you know, a small signal diode that might be 50 volts, 100 volts. For a large rectifier, you know, it might be 400 volts, 600 volts, something like that, All right? So as long as the potential, the reverse bias potential is less than that, we just treat this as an open. Okay, models. You can think of the diode as simply being a switch. This is your most basic model. Simple on-off switch, and there's a little voltage that's the knee voltage, right? This is your 0 0.7. This isn't a real source, right? Don't think you can hook this up and get you know current out of it. This is just a little model technique that we might use for circuit analysis, and I'll do a couple of examples of that. All right, so basically, when it's forward biased, switches down, and you think, yes, there is a 0.7 volt drop on here, okay, because you're going to go this way. This aligns with what I'm drawing up here. A somewhat more accurate version of this would include a bulk resistance of the diode. which would give us this little slope that you're seeing here, right? This is not perfectly straight up and down. There is a little bit of a slope to it. So we could model it that way. All right. Now, given this, clearly a non-linear, non-bilateral device, how do we you know, calculate things like a circuit current or a voltage or something along that line? So we need to do some examples. Well, the first thing you want to do is determine whether or not you have forward or reverse bias, right? Is the diode forward or reverse bias? Now, once you know that, right, once you can figure that out, 
then you know whether this switch, so to speak, is opened or closed. And then you can use your, uh, your approximation here to solve the circuit. Okay? So your second step, in other words, once you know whether it's forward advised, so you insert the model. And then simply apply your usual rules. Apply uh, KVL, KCL, Ohm's Law, etc. All right, some quick examples. And I am, in all of these examples, I'm going to be using a straight silicon signal diode or rectifying diode, so we can expect the 0.7. So let's say we have a 10 volt source out here, and I'm going to say we have a 1k ohm resistor. And my question is, what's the circulating current? What's the voltage across the resistor? And so on and so forth. Well, is the diode a forward or, forward or reverse bias? Look at this plus and minus on here. I have this single, single source. So ideally, you know, that wants to create a current like this. And plus to minus, anode to cathode, that is the very definition of forward bias. All right, so put a little thing over here. Forward means... Remember what I said, arrow points in the direction of easy current flow. So your current's going like this, you got to drop like so. If it's in reverse bias, it's the exact opposite. All right, so you would have a current trying to go this way, plus to minus that, right, against the flow. In this case, you know this is going to be 7 tenths of a volt. In this case, it's an open. So what is the voltage? Well, that's going to depend on, you know, what else is in the circuit, as we'll see. Okay, so in this particular instance, it corresponds to the forward case, right? It corresponds to this guy. So I think of this shut switch 7 tenths of a volt. Now I can apply my rules. If that's 7 tenths, then the drop across the resistor would have to be the source, 10 volts, minus the diode. In other words, it has to be 9.3 volts. And from that we can determine that single current through Ohm's law. 9.3 volts over K ohm is going to get us 9.3 milliamps. All right, beautiful. Okay, now, what if we flip this? So I'm gonna use the same circuit, I'm just gonna flip the diode around. Keep that 10 volt source. Keep our 1K ohm resistor. Same, same diode. Now, what do we have? Well, this thing wants to produce a current like this. Okay, what does that give us in terms of, uh, you know, polarities? All right, that corresponds to the reverse bias case, right? Arrows going in against what the diode arrow is doing. So this is this case. So this is an open. Think of the diode as being an open. All right, so we've got the switch opened over here. All right, what do we have? Well, if there's an open, it's just a simple series loop, right? So if the reverse is open, then obviously the current must be zero. If there is no current, Therefore, ER is also zero, which means all of the potential from KVL must be sitting across the diode, right? The rise has to equal the sum of the drops. So if there is no drop here, then all of that 10 volts 
must be sitting across the diode. Now, in reality, there will be, will be a little leakage current. You know, this is this is not zero here. You know, there is a real live leakage, but it might be measured in the nanoamps. So, you know, with a K ohm, you go in lab with a DMM, you're never going to see it. It's going to work out to this ideal sort of situation that I'm drawing. Okay. All right. So forward, reverse. Let's do something a little bit more involved. I'll keep my 10 volt source, but I'm going to put in a couple of resistors and a couple of diodes. And I'm going to call these, for lack of better names, diode 1, D1, and diode 2, D2. And then the resistors, I'm just going to make this a 1K and a 2K. So our question would be, you know, what do I get for, you know, the voltage across the 1K, the 2K, the, the diodes, right? What are the, what are the currents that we see? Things like this. Standard kinds of questions. Well, again, ask the question, are, are these diodes in forward or reverse bias? Well, what would you get from this one source? You know, if you just thought of these for a moment as just being like a resistance, you know, some unknown value, where would the currents be flowing? Well, current would go through like this. Then at this node, it would split, right? You'd have a current going this way, and you'd have a current going this way. Well, this way, right, that current continues down like this, as does this. So what do we have? Well, D1 plus to minus, which is cathode anode, that's this case, right? So this thing is off. This is the reverse case. This one, plus to minus anode to cathode, that's the forward case. So this is the on of 0.7. So we think of this as just being 0.7 volts. Well, if this is off, if this is open, right, you could simply think of this as a source, two resistors, and this 0.7 volts. Right? Just pretend this isn't even here. So what does KVL give you, right? KVL would say, well, I've got 10 volts. That's got to equal the drop on the 1K plus the drop on the 2K plus the drop on D2, which we know is 0.7 volts. So 9.3 volts must drop across the 1K and the 2K. Therefore, the current this current, which is going to be the same as this current, because again, this is an open, we can assume the current through D1 is zero. That's going to be 10 minus the 0.7, 9.3 volts over 1K plus 2K, 3K. All right, so when you divide that out, you're going to get 3.1 mils. Now you can take that 3.1 mils, figure out the drop on the 1K, 1K times 3.1 mils, will give us, k's and mils cancel, we're going to get 3.1 volts across this guy, and then across this one, 3.1 times 2k is going to get a 6.2 volts. Right, so 3.1, 6.2, 9.3, plus the 0.7, bingo, there's our 10. What's the drop across D1? All right. Well, that's from this point to our reference, to our ground down here, assuming that's ground. You can find that a couple different ways. You could say, well, we start with 10, we drop 3.1, that's what's left, 6.9. Or you could say this is equal to the parallel combo over here, which is 6.2 plus the 0.7. Either way, 6.9 volts. Okie doke. Beautiful. All right. Last question, what do you get if you swap orientation of these two diodes? In other words, what would you get if you put D1 in this way and you put D2 in 
this way. All right, so get rid of these and put them in the reverse way. What ends up happening? Well, think about that for a minute. Do a calculation or two. Build it. See what you really get. Or maybe do a simulation. Or maybe do a calculation and put your answers uh, in a comment. There we go.